Hello, in this video we're going to be doing the Pacific War as Japan. We're going to be using the save I made at the end of the guide that I did for the invasion of China. It's April 1939, a little bit later than I would have liked it to be, but, but that's left us in a very good position. So let's just do a basic recap. We have 75% compliance on all of China and that will continue to grow. This compliance is giving us 81% of their factories and resources. As it grows, this will approach 90%. Research-wise, I'm going to be going for improved medium batteries, dual purpose secondaries. We're going to let this engineer company finish. When that is done, we're going to get the improved cruiser hull. We'll stop off for improved fire control before getting the advanced fire control later on. Focuses, we are working towards the zero still. We are working towards the zero. This will give us the fighter two for free. We need to make sure we have the agility designer appointed at that point. That'll give us 20% agility. That is the highest bonus you can get in the game. Construction wise, I'm going to civ greed a bit and build a couple more civs before producing dockyards in all of the states that have low infrastructure. Their cheaper cost means they benefit less from the infrastructure bonus. So we're going to save those infrastructure slots for our military factors. Production wise, we're going for an infantry based army so i'm going to keep producing infantry equipment too if we actually check our army we have very little in our army and that's going to have a pretty negative impact on our divisions right now this is showing 86.8 but if we click off infantry equipment 2 it's only 65.4 that's a pretty big difference so we're going to keep producing infantry equipment 2 artillery 2 and we're working on getting our production efficiency up for when we actually get the zero navy I'm currently refitting our carriers to have the Pacific Fleet Designer that gives them an extra 15 deck size on all of our carriers. I am not convinced it makes sense to refit this. Maybe it does. Get an extra 30 deck size and just put fighters on it. That might make sense actually. It's not like it's overly expensive and then we'll put some AA on it. I'll do the rest of our naval refitting later. I'm not going to refit any of the destroyers. I don't consider refitting destroyers worthwhile. The light cruisers we start off with, they're all early hulls. I don't think it's worth refitting these. Just refitting this design, you can't put enough light attack on it to actually be worthwhile. The only reason you'd refit these is just as a spotter cruiser. But we're not going to have problems with subs. The AI is really bad with its subs. It's going to put all of its subs in these two sea zones and we'll just bomb them. We're going to train the Navy. We want to convert all of this fuel into Navy experience. Okay, so we're just about to finish the improved medium battery, which means we can finally get to the point where we are going to design our new heavy cruiser. However, that's going to require swapping back to flexible contracts. Swapping back to the coastal defense designer. The game automatically made me an update for this, which is great. I don't even know if I'm going to need to change anything other than add a light cruiser battery three, and you should realistically drop down to the heavy cruiser battery one. This is your 1940 CA. We are going to upgrade the Mayokos and the Megamis. They start with armor, so we're not going to change that. It's extremely expensive to refit. We can give them dual purpose secondaries though, and we can give them cruiser battery threes. They start with the medium battery twos, so we're not going to bother with the cost of refitting that. So with these designs saved, we can now go back to the naval refitting yards to increase our refitting speed. And we are going to go to our navy. We're going to take all of our Mayoko and Mogami class heavy cruisers, and we are going to convert them to the Mayoko 3. And I've also opted for prioritized naval aircraft construction for the 20% reduction in cost. We are going to send air volunteers to Germany. We don't care about army volunteers. We're not going to be able to do much with those. Be able to send 300, 300 close air support and tactical bombers. Research-wise, we're working on the 1940 variants of the naval bomber and tactical bomber and improved computing machines. As well as a little bit of fuel refining, gives us a bit more naval experience. We're also going to come into the logistics screen and make sure that air gets their oil first. And we're going to put them over the Benelux when they do. And this is going to generate us a little bit of air experience. I'm going to go strategic destruction because my air force is likely to be spread out. And this plus 15% air superiority increases how much air superiority you get from having planes up. But that caps at 30%. So what this really does is it means you need less fighters to actually get that bonus. And just before the zero becomes available, let's get the agility designer. At this point, we're going to just... We're just going to develop Chinese resources a little bit. I guess a little bit more aluminum. As we scale up our production, we are going to run out of aluminum. And, we'll, and we will also design a new fighter. I'm going to focus on range first with these guys because they already have such good agility. So once we get 130, we'll save the range upgrade first. And then as we get more, we'll also upgrade the engine. For our, for our aircraft carriers, we're actually going to start with slightly more 
than what is capable of fitting. That's because sortie efficiency actually counteracts the penalty from overcrowding. In Japan, you can get a lot of sortie efficiency. Just by doing base strike, you can get 50% sortie efficiency, plus you can get another 15% here, and you start with Yamamoto, who's going to give you an extra 20%. And as the battle goes on, some of these will get shot down, so the overcrowding penalty will disappear anyways. So from this point on, I'm just going to finish converting all of these heavy cruisers. Five on convoys, just get a small trickle in, and ten on destroyers. And once those are done, we will start producing the 1940 variant. At some point in time, you're going to want to test the Soviets. Just bring to whatever your biggest divisions are going to be. I'm using, no, I'm using 30 width. I was going to use 28 width. We'll leave them as 30 width for now, though. So let's start working on all of our industry tech, and we will test the Soviets. Also, I did prioritize steel for guns as my second. And then from there, I'm going to do probably indiscriminate conscription and special forces attack. I like to keep them balanced. Infantry equipment three. Oh, and I should probably update you guys. I've switched my air volunteers from Germany to Italy. Alrighty, let's escalate the incident. It'll grab these six divisions. Oh, and it put, really, it put my field marshal in charge. Those guys are unpierceable. Huh. I thought AA would be good enough for their light tank divisions, but apparently they build expensive light tanks. We might work on AT. We did get a nice little victory there. And that's all that matters. I am also training my entire army, just for a little bit of army experience. It might make sense to make a flame tank. A flame tank with a dozer blade on it. The rest of the stats don't matter because you're taking minus 75% penalties to them anyways. Just as cheap as you can make it. I'm going to put that in production, add these on to my marines, maybe some of my larger divisions. It depends. Uh, these guys do take fuel, so I don't know. Anyways, I'm just going to keep building up and I'll be back probably mid 1941 i still have a uh, one two three so 210 days worth of focuses to do so it's february 1941 we are in the final setup phase for declaring war on the allies i've just deployed 12 divisions i've just deployed 12 divisions these are going to hold this northern front against india i've also built a supply hub here and connected it with a level one railroad just so we have a little bit in the way of supply three to four per province is more than enough we are also going to take this dude and we're going to appoint him we're going to put him along here we are building another supply hub in 60 days i'm also building up a couple of fuel silos our current max fuel is 600,000. that's not a lot each one of these adds another hundred thousand so i'm going to build a couple of these and make sure that they're full before we declare war i have been developing as many of the aluminum resources as i can when I've had the political power. I am also going to up 12 widths to 16 widths. 16 widths are perfectly fine at defending. I've deployed 48 for our islands. I'm going to put them on low reinforcement priority. I'm also going to swap these guys to default and swap these guys to default. So let's send these guys out to the islands. Uh, we don't necessarily need to protect Okinawa, but they will try and take Iwo Jima. They will honestly try to take any island you own. Once, we'll, once they arrive, we'll make sure they're at least level 2. With this army, we are going to set up a naval invasion of the Philippines. I have selected Tip of the Spears, so we do have 20 naval invasion capacity. I should have researched this earlier. I just kind of forgot about it. But we can delay until that's done anyways. With the proper marine divisions, which I have, I've made a 28 wit, um, we are going to directly naval invade Singapore. And we'll also send some of these other large divisions to assist. And then that'll allow us 10 divisions for the Philippines. After Singapore, we'll invade Borno here. And then we're going to take all of the Dutch East Indies, Australia, and New Zealand. For naval doctrine, I've just decided to keep going down base strike just, just for the sortie efficiency. We have our fleet nice and death stacked, largely trained up. They'll be all set up, ready to go. For these invasions, I believe they have all of the naval supremacy they need. They do. Actually, we need slightly more naval experience. Okay, I'm going to remove the coastal defense designer at this point because I actually do want the range on my submarines. So the reason we wanted the extra naval experience is so that we can take our cruiser submarine and give it about 7,000 range. 
make sure to switch off of the coastal defense designer when you do this. So this isn't the cheapest sub you can make, but with 7,000 range, we'll be able to get naval supremacy around the United States if we can draw out their fleet before then and destroy most of it. So once we finish these last set of heavy cruisers, we will swap to cruiser subs because we have 31 heavy cruisers, most of which are very good. And when we declare war, we get minus 50% carrier overcrowding if we do it within the next 165 days. And then also in our naval doctrine, we get minus 20%. So we're getting minus 70% naval overcrowding for the first 180 days of this war. So I'm just going to up these slightly higher. You can do alliance with Siam. I'm not going to bother. It's just a larger part of the front I need to garrison. I'm going to do coal liquefaction just so I can do exploit the southern resource area when we get it because we will get this within a month of the war starting. One thing you can do with your spies is establish a collaboration government in India, make it easier to capitulate them. So at this point, we're just waiting for a couple of these fuel silos to finish, and then we'll be ready for war. There is level three infantry equipment, so we'll swap to that. Artillery-wise, we've built up a good stockpile so we can slow down on that. We can reduce our production there. We can, if we're willing to screw over Germany, import from the Soviet Union. And I think long term we might have to do that, but in the short term we don't need to. If you're going to import from the Soviet Union, block off these two sea zones. They will trade with you, usually through this port. Okay, it's now June 1941. We've imported as much oil as we can, and our oil silos are now full. We are ready to declare on the Philippines on the rest of the Allies. I've also set up a bit of air cover around here. They are quite communist. Interesting. Make sure your naval invasions are set to go before you do this, because then enemy naval supremacy won't necessarily be up yet. Huh. You got subs there very quickly. It's all right. I forgot to deploy them, but we have a ton of spare carrier naval bombers. I don't know why I always do that, but I always forget about Hong Kong. Don't forget about Hong Kong. Don't be me. We're not actually going to lose all three of those divisions, but that was the naval invasion for the port, which is a little concerning. But we did also manage to get this port. Down in Singapore, we've landed on two of the three ports. I'm also going to set up naval bombers along here. This is part of the reason I've been producing convoys. One useful thing you can do is manually set all of these to civilian oversight, all of the ones you control before the war that have good compliance, and then change this to something like martial law or military governor, and then don't click yes for this. So I'll switch British Malaya to martial law and the Philippines to martial law. We're actually going to swap to forced labor. It gives 40% resources, and that's pretty big because they have so many resources here. And then with these naval invasions done, we can start setting up the naval invasions for the big island. Okay, you guys just keep walking past these guys. Same with you. They are trying to navally invade here, or they've landed, but they landed on the province that wasn't the port, which means these are dead Americans. We'll just block that sea zone. Not going to bother with air cover there. These guys are also going to continue onto this next island, playing the least fun part of this game, island hopping. Really wish you could just automate it. Okay, there goes Hong Kong. Those guys are now all freed up to do other things. We don't need you on naval invasion support anymore. Let's see if we can't send you guys over to Okinawa and send these subs out convoy raiding. See if they can't find me a fleet to engage. Right there goes British Malaya, which means we can now move on to Sumantra. Huh. I'm a little low on my screening efficiency. Oh, that's because my uh, positioning. Positioning's horrible. That's fine. 
snake through all the way up here. We will lose convoys for a bit, but we'll also start sinking their subs. Quite a good number of their subs. You guys. Okay, there is American fleets out here. So when it comes to the inter-service rivalry, the only important one is the naval aircraft construction. The rest is really up to you. Okay, since they've now launched, we don't need these guys here anymore. Let's try and send them out here, see if we can't either catch a large part of their fleet or start sinking a good number of subs. Either or, I'm not picky. Okay, what are you guys doing? You are operating the assigned area. Okay, you've caught a couple of screens. This is an easy way of thinning out the uh, AI's fleet, is they will split off a whole bunch of screens and you can just pick them off really easy. It is important to do this under some sort of air cover. Okay, there goes the Philippines. We are going to want to navally invade this one port here. Intel wise, where are they saying their navy is? There's three strike force task force. Okay, I should put the main part of my navy out here. Given the size of the American fleet over here, I'm going to split these guys in half. Two cruiser subs, based out of Japan, is all I need to naval invade. Okay, that's capturing a good number of ships. Okay, we're finding all their screens. Oh, there was a... No, I want the other one. I missed it. Oh, come on, I missed it. So yeah, we've sunk eight heavy ships right here, along with 50 destroyers and five light cruisers. Battle Awake, unfortunately. Well, we can see the type. I believe the USS Arizona is their flagship. That's really disappointing. Okay, well, we found a couple more cruisers. They seem to have given up in the East China Sea, so let's bring 200 of you guys out to the Mariana region. Because they seem to be trying to still raid there, but they are largely out of ships. They've still got a good amount of their capitals, but they're running out of subs very quickly. Let's send the tactical bombers out here, too. I built the light flame tanks and then I forgot to add them, but they're perfect in jungle. I'm actually going to make a further upgrade to the Zero. I've spent all my air experience on Doctrine, so I didn't actually get to upgrade the engines. It's not very necessary to upgrade the engines in single player because you already have the plus 20% agility, but it's nice too. Okay, let's take out these divisions and then just start pushing the island. Come on! We sink another three carriers and I missed it. I haven't caught a single naval battle of importance this entire game. I mean, they still have another four carriers to sink. Okay, we are just looking over here. Come on. Nope, just a convoy. I'm gonna do one thing. Send all of these guys in. Okay, back to watching for naval battles. I will get one naval battle. Okay, my convoy raiding ships are convoy escorting. Makes sense, makes sense. No, it doesn't. Okay, let's send our subs home. We don't want to lose them. We need their range for dealing with Australia. What if I split these guys again? Cancelled. 
They took one province. So cancelled my focus. Okay, let's just go in resistance suppression then. I think if we grab four of you guys, unassign you, we should be able to start going island hopping, taking all the American islands. Let's start with this one, Guam. We're also going to swap you guys to forced labor as well as North Borno. And when we take Java, we will also swap them to forced labor. Actually, we already have enough control to do that. It will just get us a little bit more oil from extraction. What if we send you guys into the Micronesian Gap? Will that catch you something? No, I'm just capturing so many convoys here. Are these troop convoys? They are, they are troop convoys. Wait, what are the American casualties? The Americans have lost 187,000 men just to being convoy raided. You know, I probably should have done this earlier. Get these guys some air cover. Help them out a little bit. Okay. I'm going to continue setting up naval invasions here. Get all the major islands. But let's go for Wake Island next. And we are sinking a ton of troop convoys here. Some freight, but just a ton of troops as well. Oh! I don't believe I'm actually supposed to get that part of the island if they capitulate, but I will take it. Okay, we will use this one division, just do a little bit of more island hopping. Just want to go and take all of their ports. Oh, dangerous naval invasion? Well, we caught it. Oh, that is a lot of divisions on Wake Island. But it looks like we might take it because they have low supply. If I can grab these tactical bombers, put them over here. Why do you not think you'll have range to do that? Okay. We'll swap, we'll swap you two then. But if we can get that air support up, we should be able to take the island. Oh yeah, we'll take the island. Let's queue up the next naval invasion. Of I think that's Midway, is it not? No, Johnson Atoll. Midway's up north. Yes, yes. Uh, let us edit this naval invasion. If we change, if we change the starting location, it does not need to plan. Now that we've unlocked rocket artillery, we're going to put about 20 factories on that. Not that we need 20 factories on it, but we, we just need about 20 factories to get the production up and going, so we can start adding it to all of our divisions. But we should be able to go for midway now. I should have also appointed uh, air mission efficiency. Oh, I sent them in different paths. That's not what I meant to do. Okay, they only have two divisions up here, which we should be able to take out. And they have no divisions on Johnston Atoll, so. Okay, we took Midway, and we got to keep the naval invasion order. So we can do the same thing where we just edit it, move the starting location, and change the next location to Hawaii. Same with you guys. And now we can continue on to Hawaii once we give them naval supremacy. And this is why using the coastal defense designer doesn't matter. Each region can reach the next one. So it really doesn't matter that you're taking the minus 50% range penalty. Oh, the American fleet is there? Okay, let's uh, half merge these guys up. Aren't you operating as two rather than four? The American fleet is out and about. Okay. Only division guarding Hawaii was a Mexican division. And 
Tora 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 ran out as we took Hawaii. I'd say that's perfect timing. We're also going to take Port Moresby. We're going to take the rest of this island. And then we're going to launch naval invasions of Australia, New Zealand, and the rest of these little islands. So I mentioned doing it earlier, but I forgot to actually start doing it. And that is forming a collaboration government on the British Raj. It'll make them capitulate a little bit easier. I'm going to swap out the political power guy for the elusive gentleman. We can now go exploit the southern resource area. We've been able to do that for a little while now. Because Tora 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 has ended, we should come into our fleets and we should drop down these sizes closer to that max amount. And we are going to take this army. We are going to delete their orders. Because we have 50 naval invasion capacity, I'm going to set up a naval invasion for each one of these garrisons. So that we can take all of these islands very quickly. Two per island should be good enough. These islands are actually likely unguarded, so we could probably do one per island. So this is what the final plan looks like. A couple are going to be come take this island, then go to another island. Okay, so we've used 23 of our 50. We're also going to take the main naval invasion army. And we're going to set up an invasion around all of Australia, taking every one of their major victory points. And that's going to end up looking like this. Two invasions here, the rest along this coast. We'll also set up a risky naval invasion with no support. I'm also going to train up another 24 plus 5 divisions. These are going to be for the invasion of the United States. That's also why I'm trying to get another spy so I can start spying on them, get some collaboration governments make them easier to capitulate. And this is why we needed the cruiser subs. So the cruiser subs can reach down here. Our main fleet cannot, and our other subs cannot. We're gonna bring back our main fleet and we'll have them convoy raid in every sea zone they can around here. Okay, so it turns out some of these islands were actually defended, which I find quite surprising. We are now set up. Everyone is in place, so we can now launch naval invasion of China. We can now launch the naval invasion of Australia. We are not, we don't have naval invasion. Game is saying we don't actually have enough over here. Let's see if we can get a little bit of air superiority. See if that will give us enough. Yep, so they will now launch. We are successfully taking all of these islands out here. And for the most part, we're just landing about two divisions port. We are catching a lot of troop convoys. Immediately march onto Canabera. These guys going north and south to give them supply. I thought that was the capitulation of Australia, but we have not taken Perth yet. It's a bit longer of a naval invasion. While we're waiting for Australia to capitulate, let's set up the naval invasions. If we can take these four cities, they will capitulate. Oh, that is most of the rest of this fleet. You two merge up, stop your order, and come here. And make sure they don't... Oh, I'm retreating. Dang, I don't think I'm going to get there in time. Okay, well, I still want these guys over here, though. Oh, we the, the Navy immediately started here. Okay, now let's move in. Set to always engage, and they should 
show up, hopefully. Dang it, the American fleet did not join the fight. Okay, let's move off again. Hopefully they try and do something here again. Okay, there goes Australia, which is nice. So with Australia gone, we can set up the naval invasions. If they're not going to show up here, then there's no point in holding you here. So we'll just put you back to where you were. You guys all ready to go? Okay. Let's go for New Zealand. Okay, we might land in the north here. Do I have tactical bombers nearby? I do. They don't think they can reach New Zealand, though. Doesn't matter. We landed anyways. So that is all of the Southeast Pacific and Australia and New Zealand taken, other than the one little bit owned by the Portuguese, but there's no resources there. We are going to stop convoy raiding with our fleet. It is draining our fuel. Italy, what are you doing? Okay, just in time, we have our 24 new divisions ready. So with this army, we are going to launch a multi-prong offensive around all of India. And then we'll also take four divisions from this dude, send you up to Calcutta and Dhaka, or however you want to say that. We will probably need to take out Ceylon first. So shift, left click, shift, left click. That'll execute just those two orders. You have to have the army selected for that to work though. Okay, let's get the fleet nice and repaired up. We don't need to lose any ships. It's going to take about a month to do this. Did I seriously only assign one division to that? I guess this guy will help. We will want to build the airbase up here. I have 800 strategic... I have 800 tactical bombers prepared to operate out of this airbase. Let's also set up a naval invasion from here to over here, near Bombay. Alrighty, we are ready to launch this naval invasion. Are we serious? We're taking very hot attrition at sea. Come on, they haven't fixed that. Okay, half the cavalry army can come here. The other half can come up here. We will split India in half. I thought for a second I didn't land on the port. Set everyone to aggressive. They failed to land, but that's okay. They're not actual marines, so it's not that surprising. Half of you we're going to send up here, and the other half we're going to send here.
sneak along the deli. Okay, let's switch to a field marshal front line. We'll, we'll assign everyone to this as as we merge up the front lines. Get you guys in on the action. Push down to this victory point. It's worth five. I don't think the quit India movement's going to help you there. Pretty certain I saw one tick there where I had 700. You're not getting Indochina. 700 attack. There goes India. Let's just mop up some of their survivors here. So that's the capitulation of India. I'm going to set up a small garrison of India with the guys that we were using for all the islands. And then I'll navally invade the United States. Okay, so I've spent the last couple of months preparing for the invasion of the United States. I'll give you the rundown of what I've done. I've also prepared for the defense of India in case they try to retake it. 60 units defending the port, 24 units as a quick response team. I spent the last little while building up my fuel reserves as well. I've split my navy, two of my carriers, and a couple of my heavy cruisers over here, just occupying the British. And then I've got the main part of my navy under a different dude who has cruiser captain. Very good trait. He starts with fly swatter, which is the reason he can get it. And I've got these 67 cruiser subs I've built so far. And we're going to use that to invade California. I've also swapped over a bunch more of my divisions to the marine template, which I made a slight alteration to. I swapped out a marine for an artillery mainly so I could add AT and keep all my support companies. Outside of that, I'm now using a 29 width for my main division template. Now I'm going to address this now because at some point, somebody's going to be like, why don't you use logistics companies? Well, I do sometimes, but I'm not here. And why is that? Well, this division that has a base of 1.69 supply usage is only using 0.97. And that is a combination of the generals and the fact that I stuck with Grand Battle Plan. If you add up all these numbers, it's 37.5% reduction. Now, that's not actually how the math works. The top two are multiplicative. The rest are additive. If I bring up my calculator, this is the math. So you have the base 1.69 times 1 minus all of your general multipliers, which is the three on the bottom there. And then infiltration assault and logistical focus are applied multiplicatively after that. Now, if I'd done logistics companies, I could come into the template and I could swap out probably the rocket artillery. I just wouldn't have done the rocket artillery. And I could bring that number down another 30% by this point with 1942 tech, but it's just, it's not necessary. So let's start assigning these units. We're going to send three at the ports and then we'll send two for each province next to the port. This is the main reason we built the cruiser subs. We need to convoy raid these three areas, and then we'll put you on strike force in this one. And by splitting up and having our main fleet and this fleet together, we instantly have naval supremacy all the way to the western seaboard. Why? Because the U.S. Navy still exists. I mean, it's got a good amount of battleships. It's still building 1936 carriers for some reason. It's got a good number of heavy cruisers and light cruisers, but it doesn't matter. They're all off doing who knows what. They're all protecting the eastern seaboard, like I'm going to navally invade them that way. I have also taken the liberty of training up 6,800 fighters and nearly 2,000 tactical bombers, and I am preparing collaboration government. I had to rebuild my spy network to rescue the spy, unfortunately. I have suicide pills, didn't do anything. Anyways, I'm going to show you guys a time lapse of me taking out the United States, but the main part is just capture the supply hubs, advance along the railways. I've got all my armies pulled up as close as they can get without being oversupply. So we are prepared to invade with 72 of these divisions and, and then 24 cavalry divisions, and this will be enough.
So I just noticed I just did this entire thing without ever putting my air up. And now I'm in a spot where I can't put my air up because I don't have the range. Before these guys leave, make sure they actually have orders. The range is the main power of tactical bombers. Casts are better, but the range... Okay. There goes Mexico. Let's grab six divisions and we'll bring them over here. Just deal with this a little bit.
And there goes the United States. A couple more provinces. Once Canada capitulates, which should be now, I will consider this a success. Italy might have capitulated. D-Day might be happening. And the Soviets might not be particularly close to actually capitulating. But this has been a very successful Japan game. Anyways, thank you for watching. I think I'll do guides on the UK and Italy, probably. Total War Warhammer 3 comes out in six days. So I got six days to make those. Well, six days from when I'm recording this. Who knows when it goes up. I still have to find the energy to edit it.